first stop on our tour is the Churchill War Rooms. This is where Winston Churchill and his staff would meet to plan, plan their moves for World War II. So under here, there's just a bunch of rooms where they would meet, discuss, and decide what they were gonna do in response to the Nazis. And sometimes Churchill would have to sleep here, but he didn't like doing that because it meant that he felt that he was admitting that he was afraid of the Nazis and the Germans. And so he had rooms under here. A lot of the staff had rooms um, underground as well, and they would have to stay there for weeks and not see any daylight. But it's a really cool area, and you can learn a lot about the war, and most of it is just untouched because it was sealed after the war was over. And recently they opened it back up and made it into a museum. And so you can go through here, and there's even a map room where they have like pins on everything that happened during the war. And so you can see like how people were responding back then to every move of the war. And so it's a really cool untouched area that gives you some insight into how Britain responded during World War II. Now we're at the Women of World War II Memorial. This memorial was opened by Queen Elizabeth II in 2005 to remember all the women that supported the war effort. There were over 7 million women who volunteered for the armed services and supporting roles in World War II. The memorial is made of bronze, which is quite different from the rest of the memorials on this street, and it features hung up uniforms of the Army, WREN, Red Cross nurses, land girls, and more. So it's an extremely special memorial that just honors the women that supported the war. Okay, so we're here at St. Paul's Cathedral, which is essentially an Anglican church built in London. It is at the highest point um, of London, so they wanted to be closer to God. It is the, um, it is the seat of the Bishop of London, um, and it's located on Ludgate Hill. St. Paul's Cathedral is a, uh, a great symbol of hope to the British during World War II. It provided a lot of solace when it came to uh, the elegant Baroque style of uh, building. And then um, it was actually bombed during World War II. Um, a bomb went through a window and destroyed the high altar, um, but is now repaired, thankfully. And as we move on, we also, I also want to highlight that there is an American memorial to the soldiers that died during D-Day in there. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. 10 out of 10. Check it out. <laughs> so, we're standing in front of the Imperial War Museum. This is actually just one of the five locations that they have in England here. There's actually three different war museums in London itself, but this one is purely dedicated to World War II and World War I um, specific events. Um, it, this museum in particular originally started to highlight the achievements during World War I by the English Army and the Commonwealth. Um, but eventually it evolved <clears throat> into a bigger museum for all of the Commonwealth's battles from World War I on. Um, inside it includes an extensive collection of artifacts and trophies and memorabilia from World War I on. Thank you. This is the HMS Belfast. It was built during World War II and as soon as it was built, it was immediately used for the Royal Navy during World War II. It had a damage to the keel of the ship and was immediately decommissioned. And then it was um, quickly uh, reconstructed or re it was quickly fixed again and then was put back out into the war and played a significance against the Nazis during World War II. And now it is here today and it stays as a museum for people to visit and is run by the Imperial War Museum. This is the Twinings Tea Company, and it was founded by Thomas Twinings in 1706. And it was the company supplied tea to the troops during World War II to keep up the morale of the soldiers. And it, the company is still around today and still sells their famous products around the world.